All right, guys, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to hang up a chin-up bar. So I actually broke my chin-up bar off the deck. Um, I put it up about three years ago, and what ends up happening usually is they give you these uh, cheap, more indoor -y type of screws, and they do rust out. And when they do rust out, I'm just going to come in close. You end up not getting a good bite into the wood. And even though I've uh, put this into pressure-treated wood, it's still... Um, it popped off one day when I was doing my chin up. So I'll show you how to hang something like this onto a wood uh, subject. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you why chin ups are so important for men and attraction with women. Okay, so for the purpose of this, um, I've got a roughly two by six up here and it's not quite uh, big enough to uh, support the distance that I need for this uh, particular chin up bar between the two. So I had to go over to the uh, hardware store and I picked up a piece of pressure. It has to be pressure treated wood. You can't use regular wood because it will rot out quite quickly. Uh, older pressure treated wood's green. The newer stuff today is brown. I don't know if it's more environmentally friendly, but anyway, that's all that they have available. So first step is I'm gonna have to cut this to length because it's too long between the two studs. So I'll show you how to do that first, how to measure it, super easy. All I'm gonna do, <clears throat> actually I'll come up here and do it. All I'm going to do is line up the edges between here and I got my pencil I'm going to draw a line just down the back over there. I've got my nice straight edge to cut. So I don't have a sawhorse, don't need a sawhorse. I'm going to use the steps to my hot tub instead. All right, because I'm right handed, I'm going to have to shift over and kind of do it this way a little bit, but here we go. All right, let's just chuck it. Good length. So now we're gonna, we gotta mark out the holes where this is gonna hang from. So uh, I'm just gonna line it up and use my trusty pencil. And so you guys can see what I'm using to hold this up. Um, you're gonna need a washer and a bolt, nut and bolt setup which is gonna include that on one side, and of course that goes on the back. And rather than screwing it in like I did with the other one, this will be a lot more secure. This is, there's, there's absolutely no way, once this is uh, torqued down tight, that that uh, bolt will ever come off and I'll fall off the deck like I did last week. All right, so I've got these um, wood screws, which are uh, three and a half inches. Uh, they're galvanized, so they won't rust as well. You need this stuff for any kind of deck work outside. Super important that you have um, the proper screws for the job. Next step is I'm going to mount this uh, just underneath here. Again, the only reason why I had to get this is because the distance between the two pieces uh, is so much that if I put it up here on the deck, um, I'd end up with a problem where I'd probably be a little too low and that would be too high up and the wood would eventually split and just kind of die on me. So. Um, I'm adding this additional piece to make sure that I've got a good solid uh, piece for the chin-up bar to mount to so I don't wipe out when I'm doing my chins. All right, because these screws are so long, um, rather than trying to screw them in directly with the driver, I'm going to drill a, a, a hole. And the easiest way to explain this so that you can do this yourself is if you want to know what size drill bit to use with the wood screw, make sure the drill bit is no thicker than the... Um, uh, the part of the screw that doesn't have the uh, biting mechanism. So when you screw this in, obviously it starts to bite into the wood. So you don't want a drill bit that extends to this part. You basically want about half of the uh, width so that the wood has, so that the um, screw has something to bite into. Okay, the reason why I'm drilling two holes is obviously it's a lot stronger than just one screw. Because it's going to support the weight of a, you know, 210 pound guy. So. How to do it right. All right, and if you're gonna do any handiwork, make sure you always have the right tools. Uh, if you get shit results out of your job, it's because, uh, I mean, a poor workman's always gonna blame his tools, so make sure you always have the right tool. If you use the wrong uh, square head, you're just gonna strip it and it's not gonna go anywhere. So it's gotta be a nice snug fit. Have a good driver set. This, this happens to be a number two. It's a good snug fit. So let's get these things uh, pre-screwed in. So we got a nice little tip sticking out, which is all you want just the tip. And now we'll just mount this to the deck. So it'll be super easy to find uh, the holes that you've just pre-drilled here because these will go straight into them nice and easily, just like that. You just have to change the torque setting to make it a little higher so you get the screw all the way in. 
We're just going to repeat the process on the other side here. All right, so because um, my pull-up bar came with this uh, marker paper, this makes your job so much easier. It just saves you the trouble of measuring the distances between the holes. Uh, of course, they've set it up uh, 16 inches between the two posts because that's the difference between interior studs in most homes or basement walls or anything like that. It's, it's pretty standard in North America. We're doing this outside, so I want to make sure that I get it done right. So I've got this lined up. I want the bottom holes around the middle of this piece of wood over here. And I also want to make sure that this is level. So one bar isn't higher than the other, which it shouldn't be. That's pretty level. So spirit levels are pretty straightforward. Bubbles in the middle, and that's when you know it's level. And now we can drill our holes. All right, um, I've already drilled this top hole uh, just to line up my first uh, section. Let's hit the other ones over here. Of course, make sure you're not drilling into your forearm. Make sure you got a good clearance spot behind it. Okay, so we can take this off now. And our next step is let's mount this bad boy. And then we'll talk about why pull-ups are so important for men. So um, the top bolt here, I'm going to throw one washer in through the bolt and just kind of drop it in the hole over there like so. And again over there. And the next step is just kind of push these through the hole. Now, if I got the hole size right, it should go in nice and easy, but I usually go a little snugger. So let's see what happens. All right, so I've just um, pushed in my two top bolts. We'll do this, the bottoms in a second, but I'm going to show you why these are significant and so much stronger than the screws that I had before. So the washer, the bolt on one side, and if we come up the other side, up over here, you can see the other end over here pops out. We put another washer on the back and the bolt goes on there, which I'll show you in just one second. Okay, so I got my washer and my bolt on, so I'm gonna just hand tighten that. And I'll do the same thing with the other, um, obviously top one and then the two bottom ones here in a minute so i'll show you what that looks like in a second all right guys so for this step you're going to need a uh, a ratchet and a adjustable spanner uh this is going to go on the back this will go on the front and i'm of course going to start tightening it the reason why you need both pieces is if you don't um, it'll start spinning on itself in the axis and you just won't get it down snug so uh, we're just going to put this on one side over here and you just tighten it up and what we're going to do is i'm just going to take this lug over here and hand tighten it on this side you don't even need to see it. You can just kind of feel it. I've got that on there now. Put this on and just start tightening. Now I'm not going to go too tight because I'm going to basically torque them all one after the other, but I want it nice and snug. It's not like we're putting on wheels on a car and I'll explain that maybe in a future video, but just get it on nice and snug before you go around and do your final tighten. We're just going to repeat that process with the other three. All right. And this final step, I'm just going to go around and snug them, make sure they're nice and tight. Not too tight because you don't want to strip the thread. If you're, if you're really torquing on it, like half put on your body weight, it's too much. But that's good right there. And we're all done. All right, guys, that's it. So we've mounted our chin-up bar. It's nice and sturdy. Let's just check the weight. Yeah, okay. So why does this matter? Why is this significant for men? And why every guy should do chin-ups? Um, if you want a V taper, which is one of the strongest indicators of masculine strength, two women to the opposite sex, you're going to have, there's, there's no way around it. You're going to have to do chin-ups. It's just the way that it is. Uh, they have pull down bars at the gym. Uh, my body weight's pretty high. I'm about 210 pounds. So pulling my body weight up and down, um, a good half dozen, a dozen times, about three to four sets every other day usually does it for me. I do my interior stuff, but doing this outside will maximize a V taper. The golden ratio, by the way, guys is 1.62, meaning your shoulder width, should be 1.62 times the width of your waist. This is something every guy can influence. You can't influence your height. Studies have shown that less than 10% of visual attractiveness uh, to women is based on height alone. They're more interested in the actual dimensions and the proportions of the V taper. That's something that you can affect. It doesn't matter if you're five foot four or six foot four. So get yourself a chin up bar. I've shown you how to mount it do them make sure you get enough done so that you start to develop a strong masculine physique if you want to figure out what your shoulder width ratio is easiest way to do that is stand up against your glass shower door um, i could even stand up against that glass door over there and take a, uh, a like a black dry erase marker mark my uh, belt line from here to here mark my uh, shoulder boom and boom and then just take my measurement tape and measure the width and then divide that into the waistline and that'll tell you if your ratio is ideal. If it's not 1.62, you got some work to do. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Give it a thumbs up and comment below. See you guys in the next one. Peace.